I feel like the acoustics are pretty good. Are we good to go? Awesome. Hey everyone, my name is David and today I'm going to be talking a little bit more about plasma. Uh, yeah, uh, plasma is super cool. You can use it for a lot of things and hopefully you'll learn a little bit more uh, through this talk. So here goes. I was actually practicing the clicker usage, and it did work. Uh, <laughs> I could, I think so. Okay, well, plasmas, uh, like I can do this ad hoc, but I would, I prefer slides. Oh, awesome. So today I'm going to kind of uh, divide my talk into three se segments. One, why it matters, uh, scaling and plasma in particular. Two, what's happening right now. Carl uh, covered some of it earlier. I'm just going to give like uh, a few more details about it. And then three, big picture, the plasma vision. So here goes. So why it matters. Scaling, it's the name of the game. It's what everyone is talking about. There was just a, an event in Barcelona about scaling, so it's kind of important. But why is it so important? Well, Ethereum's wonderful, but in its current state, it's single-threaded. And this is fine for one computer. It's even fine for two computers that are running all the transactions. But as soon as you get to around 20,000 computers trying to process uh, basically the entire transaction throughput of the Ethereum network, it gets pretty crazy. And uh, now that people are actually excited about using blockchains and using Ethereum, uh, the infrastructure has to catch up, and that's why there are so many emerging scaling solutions on the horizon. Plasma uh, is one of these scaling solutions. What makes Plasma so special uh, is that you're able to make another blockchain which derives its security from a root chain. Uh, so in the case of what we're building uh, at Omise Go, the child chain will derive its security uh, from Ethereum, which is super awesome because uh, blockchains currently derive their security from economic incentives. Uh, so if you're just starting a side chain, uh, when it's just starting out, it probably won't uh, be worth that much. Uh, so it'll have a relatively low cost of attack. But with Plasma, you can get increased transaction throughput with a child chain uh, while basically uh, building it off of the economic security of Ethereum, which is quite, it's well proven, it's in production, and it's worth billions of dollars. So you get a lot more economic security from it. So how does this all work? Scaling through compaction. Uh, so this is a fairly simple example here. We have a UTXO set, and that makes up the state uh, of the child chain. Uh, and then we use cryptography to basically take that state and then squish it down uh, into a compact form. Uh, I call it a restorable state. And then we put that restorable state onto Ethereum. And Ethereum uh, is kind of the final arbiter. Ethereum keeps track of that state. And ha but how do we recover this recoverable state? Well, we use cryptography. So we, pre we compressed it using cryptography, and then to get it back, a user or anyone uh, really could basically create a cryptographic proof that uh, basically at a given time, uh, this state was a certain way. In this example, at a given time, Alice owned a particular UTXO. And then the user basically specifies Alice's UTXO, puts in a proof, and then Ethereum processes that and checks that everything is valid. And then boom, you have Alice's UTXO as the output without having to store it directly. Ooh, 
Cool, projector's still on. <laughs> so, uh, how does this actually work in the case of a, a UTXO set? Well, right now we're using uh, Merkle proofs. You've, some of you have probably heard about Merkles. They're super cool. A lot of uh, things blockchain related use them. Ethereum uh, uses them. Yeah, they're awesome. And basically, uh, what they're best at is proofs of inclusion. So basically, proving uh, that at, proving that at a given time something uh, was part of uh, a given set. So in this example here, we have a UTXO set. We hash it down. So basically, turning each UTXO into a 32-byte hash because that's easier to work with, and then we start hashing things together until we get a root uh, of the UTXO set, and then we store that root on Ethereum, uh, and that is basically the restorable state. And through that, we can prove that Alice had ownership of one of these UTXOs at a given time. How do we do that? Oh. Well, we basically create the path of hashes leading up to the root. So Alice would submit a UTXO, but then she'd also submit the, next, the necessary hashes to recreate the root of the Merkle tree. And then through that, she basically has proof that she owned it at a given time, which is uh, super cool because it's significantly more easy to just store a root on Ethereum than the entire UTXO set. Ooh, shit. Boom. Now I'm going to talk about uh, some stuff that's happening now with Plasma. Boom. So uh, Plasma MVP, uh, kind of uh, the first pack written up by uh, Vitalik, uh, is ba basically a UTXO payments blockchain, uh, significantly uh, similar in terms of functionality uh, to Bitcoin. And uh, that's kind of the first stage of pushing Plasma. Uh, from a white paper into something actually uh, into implementable. And right now there are multiple teams kind of working off that and then iterating upon that further. But how does it actually work? Well, we have first UTXOs, unspent transaction outputs, and uh, basically they need to specify an owner and an amount. Uh, so who has the money and how much money do they have? But we kind of get an issue. When we're using UTXOs to track uh, who owns what, one person can have multiple UTXOs. They could even have 1,000 UTXOs. And so in terms of kind of maneuvering these around, it's quite difficult because the way Plasma MVP works is if anything goes wrong, everyone has to exit within a given amount of time. And so if one user has 1,000 UTXOs, that means they would have to pr perform 1,000 exit transactions on Ethereum. And we don't want anyone to have to do that. So we use account simulation. And what account simulation is, is basically doing two UTXO transactions to simulate accounts. Uh, so in this example, Alice has 100, Bob has 100. Then Alice sends a transaction creates a transaction, uh, giving herself at 95, and then giving Bob a, a UTXO of five. And then Bob still has the UTXO of 100. So as you could imagine, if we stopped at this stage, Bob now has two UTXOs. This could basically, he could basically accumulate more and more UTXOs, and eventually uh, exiting would become very difficult and expensive. So. We have, so to prevent this, on the child chain, what we have Bob do is we have Bob do uh, one more transaction, which basically just nets his two UTXOs into one. And that basically makes it so that you, for most of the time, each user of the child chain will have all of their value uh, in one UTXO, which uh, for, like, for using, it can be thought of as an account, which is super cool. But how does Plasma uh, MVP actually work? So we start with uh, a, basically a contract on Ethereum that is securing the child chain. And when users want to start using the child chain, they deposit value uh, from Ethereum, uh, from like their token smart contract or Ether. They deposit that value into the Plasma smart contract on Ethereum. 
and th those funds are basically locked in to the Plasma smart contract and will only be, and they basically come out again uh, on the Plasma side of things. And then uh, you basically, if a, when a user exits, they regain access to their funds. In the case of Plasma MVP, a, a user deposits funds and for simplicity's sake, this actually creates a, a new block uh, on the, of the child chain uh, on the Plasma smart contract on Ethereum. And this is super cool because uh, before we had to deal with kind of two types of uh, withdrawals. One where a deposit uh, basically was made but it never showed up on, a, on the child chain. And then you had to basically prove that you made a deposit. Whereas now, because the deposit uh, shows up in a child chain block instantly on Ethereum, all users have to do is go through the normal withdraw process. So for both deposit cancels and normal exits, there's one process which just limits attack vectors and makes things significantly simpler. Boom. So how do these transactions actually look? So you have inputs. Uh, which are basically referencing the positions of previously created UTXOs. And these inputs, uh, they need to basically be referenced. You reference the transaction position where the UTXO was created. And you also need uh, the signature from the owner of that input because we only want uh, the owner of a given UTXO to be able to spend it. And then you have outputs. Uh, which are th the new UTXOs, and then you have the fee. So uh, this fee, uh, much like with Ethereum's gas, uh, basically uh, pays the consensus mechanism uh, for providing the utility and also prevents DDoSs because even though we'll get a large amount of scaling without uh, charging people fees, they could basically overrun the child chain w with a bunch of spammy transactions and that would be basically make it useless. But we can do more. So uh, basically with, uh, with child chains and with uh, Plasma MVP transactions, we need uh, confirmations uh, because right now there's a situation where, uh, and I'll get to why we need confirmations in a bit, but basically there's a situation where someone can send a transaction, the operator can withhold it, and there's basically no way to prove uh, whether someone has actually double spent it and it's been included in the child chain, or, or if uh, the operator is just being bad. But with Plasma and child chain transactions, we want to support more than ETH, and this is really simple. Uh, with kind of the UTXO model. We just add one more field, and that's currencies. And all of a sudden, you can support ETH and ERC20s, uh, and eventually, uh, pretty much any currency down the road. And uh, the key kind of security principle of uh, Plasma any MVP is that if anything goes wrong, everyone has to exit. So if you're validating the child chain and you see an invalid block, or if the block, uh, basically the consensus mechanism block, uh, like the child chain operator, suddenly starts withholding blocks, you assume that something bad has happened and you have to basically call all in exit on Ethereum uh, to get your funds back within a given amount of time. So what does this actually look like? On Ethereum, we have a priority queue, so that basically, uh, keeps track of the order uh, uh, of the order of exits. So basically, if you're watching the child chain and you notice something sketchy is going on, or if there's block withholding, uh, you basically exit your UTXO. And if you do it w uh, within seven days, you're basically guaranteed to have your UTXOs uh, successfully exit before an invalid UTXO, which was cre which has been created later. So this works super well. It's a little bit annoying because, uh, because exits are processed in uh, the priority queue. You have to pay a significant amount of attention to the, the child chain to constantly verify it. But yeah, it works, but it's uh, basically a fractional reserve on the 
Ethereum root chain, which is not optimal uh, in the sense that an operator, if left unchecked, can then uh, withdraw uh, and basically create money out of thin air. Okay. Awesome. So here's where we're at now. So right now with Plasma MVP, someone deposits funds, they get their UTXO back out on the child chain. They can kind of play around with UTXOs, juggle them around a bit, uh, and trade them to people, do uh, kind of swaps with them. And then w once they're ready, or if anything goes wrong, they go through a withdrawal. Now for a story. So I just want to emphasize why confirmations are so important. Because when I first was kind of uh, looking into Plasma, I, uh, I kind of Basically, because uh, confirmations are a pain from a user experience perspective, I kind of kept trying to wiggle my way out of them. But at least for right now, confirmations provide a super kind of valuable, uh, valuable service, uh, service and play an important role. So in this story, we have Alice, Bob, and Hades. Uh, and Alice and Bob are just normal users, and Hades is the child chain operator. So. Everything's going normally. Alice is on the child chain, and she sends a transaction to Bob, transferring Bob X amount of money. But the Hades, the operator, uh, is basically a bad actor. So he's trying to steal, uh, steal everyone on the child chain's money. So what he does is he takes Alice's transaction to Bob, and he withholds it. So he doesn't include it in the child chain. Then what? Then he creates an invalid transaction, includes it uh, in the child chain, uh, then he exits that, and then he includes uh, Alice's transaction to Bob, but he withholds that transaction, uh, withholds that block. So Alice really has no way to even know if her transaction has ever been included in the child chain. So here's what happens. Basically, the operator is bad, but because the operator is withholding, we can't prove it. So Alice realizes something bad is going on, tries to exit, but if she, when, once she exits, the operator can basically submit proof of a double spend because he did include Alice's transaction. He just included it later and withheld the block. So Alice has no way to exit. And then if Bob sees the successful challenge and uses that information to try to exit himself because now he's the rightful owner of the given output that Alice uh, created for him. He can't exit either because his transaction uh, was created after, or was in basically the transaction that created his unspent output was included after Hades' invalid transaction. So, if you remember the priority queue, what would happen is Hades' invalid transaction would clear the Plasma smart contract on Ethereum before Bob's exit. And basically what happens here is that Hades ends up uh, getting away with everyone's money, but neither party's exits who, sh who should have access to the money uh, will get to basically occur successfully. With confirmations, what we're basically able to do is Alice only gives up custody of her funds uh, once, she has, once she is able to see that her transaction has been safely included in the Ethereum Plasma smart contract and, uh, once she's, and when she has access to the given block where it was included so she can basically validate that everything up to that point is uh, basically valid transactions, no creating money out of thin air. But, Pcash, this is what everyone's talking about, and this is, there's basically significant progress in this area. Uh, Non-fungible tokens blockchains are super cool, because uh, if you remember the problem I was talking about where, where when we have a fractional reserve, uh, basically, a child chain's consensus mechanism can create money out of thin air if the users aren't paying enough attention. Well, we don't have this issue with non-fungible uh, block token blockchains because every asset and its unique ID is stored on 
the plasma smart contract on Ethereum. So what this means is that an operator can't just create a new object and withdraw it, which is super cool. But the operator can still basically try to steal an object uh, by withdrawing something that doesn't currently belong to them in the most recent state of the plasma child chain. So we still need to watch it. But instead of checking the entire state of a child chain, Alice is, only has to check her piece of the child chain. So she's checking her, basically, her, uh, basically Merkle proofs of exclusion that prove that she, that her, uh, her unique objects that she owns haven't been accessed. And she doesn't really need to care about everything else, which is super awesome because, uh, as we start to get uh, bigger child chains and more transactions per second, if each user can remain safe by only checking a small piece of data, uh, basically what they care about, it allows for a lot more scalability. So yeah, and when Hades comes in and tries to steal Alice's transaction, even with the small amount of state, she still has enough information uh, and enough power to basically prove that no, she is the most recent owner by submitting a later transaction that proves that, hey, no, at one point Hades owned this, but actually he basically did a transaction transferring ownership to me, and Hades is not able to steal her money, uh, and this has been achieved with no confirmations, which is awesome. So, how? Basically, uh, if Hades tried to create something that wasn't valid, it'd be checked on Ethereum and it, it wouldn't go through. Because we have a clear record of what's happening and the value of all the assets that are stored on the child chain and nothing can be created, when Hades tries to submit a fraudulent value, it's just stopped right away and we don't have to worry about a new kind of asset being created on Ethereum. So, big picture. The Plasma white paper promised chi multiple layers of child chains and them all talking to each other, them verifying each other, uh, basically varying app-specific child chains uh, depending on the needs of an application, and basically a bunch of cool things. And that's currently being worked on. Uh, there are people working on kind of how Plasma can be used to do computation, uh, how we can use account models with Plasma, how we can eliminate confirmations, how we can basically uh, do other stuff besides payments. And yeah, that's going forward. It's a, prog it's a process. Eventually, general state transitions uh, will be possible with Plasma. And yeah, when that day comes, uh, it'll really open the floodgates because then someone can basically take a Solidity smart contract and without having to think about how to basically secure a specific plasma chain uh, that has their given functionality, they'll just be able to deploy a Solidity smart contract on a plasma chain and it'll be super smooth with low transaction fees. So yeah, plasma chains. And uh, how will this look though? And uh, the best example I've heard about how these plasma chains will kind of interact with one another and how security will be de derived is through courts. And so we start with the courts of first instance. This is the lowest level court. And so these child chains will basically have a really quick uh, transaction throughput and uh, the transaction fees will be the lowest because they're basically the furthest removed from Ethereum where security is derived. So if anything goes wrong, it, it will take more arbitration and there's less economic guarantees for the lower down chains. And then we'll have the Court of Appeals where the courts of first instance are, are secured by the Court of Appeals. So if anything goes wrong on these, it makes the most sense for a user to kind of say, hey, no, submit a fraud proof, this is what actually happened to the Court of Appeals. Uh, because going one level above will be significantly cheaper than just jumping uh, to Ethereum. And then finally, we have the Supreme Court. Uh, so in this case, this would be Ethereum, and this is basically the law of the land. 
if everything goes wrong on child chains, you basically have to resort to using the root chain to settle all disputes and make sure everything kind of turns out the way it's supposed to. The downside to this is as Ethereum grows in popularity and uh, the mainnet receives more and more uses, gas prices, gas costs will probably rise. And with that, it'll be more expensive to result, settle stuff on Ethereum. So the goal is for that to happen uh, as infrequently as possible. Boom. So as you see here, we have the different layers of basically blockchains that are talking to each other, talking to the root chain, and boom. Uh, yeah, so kind of going forward, talk about what matters. I'm gonna echo what Adrian said. Build the scaling solutions, don't just wait for them to come to you. Uh, yeah, there's a bunch of cool projects who are actively searching for people like all of you to contribute, to add value, to use your creative and beautiful minds to contribute wonderful ideas. Do research. So yeah, once you have wonderful ideas, kind of pick them apart. Talk to people who are smarter than you or who have more experience. And then yeah, kind of meld your creative ideas into solid specifications, and yeah, build them. Boom, boom. Build your own plasma, oh, yeah, sorry, yeah. Build your own plasma chains, app-specific use cases. Plasma can change the world.